Hello traders, I am super pumped to be making my second LRA video. If you haven't seen the first video, I would highly recommend you go check out uh, the first video in this playlist. And due to a lot of traders who wanted to learn a little bit more about this trading technique, I'm covering some more. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over something known as the loss cycle. And this is the cycle of price movement that leads most retail traders to be losing money. Uh, if you can take advantage of this cycle, you will probably make money. And if you don't, then you'll be caught in the continuous cycle of losing money. Let's go in. All right, traders, I want you to look at this right here. Look at open interest in Bitcoin and price and give me some reasons why price rose. Okay. We're going to segue this into what the loss cycle is. All right. I'm going to let you guys look at this picture for a little bit or not picture because it's live and then I'll pull up my picture. So here, here's what ended up happening. We have a locked in range up here. We have a locked in range down here. Anyone who had shorted here is profitable. Anyone who longed here is unprofitable. Anyone who shorted here is unprofitable. Anyone who longed here is profitable, right? But look at the nature of prices, highs, and open interest, and its relation to traders who had traded here. Each time that price rises and gets up to a certain point near this consolidation range, OI falls because traders take break even. This means two things. First of all, that any longs who had bought here or who had bought here get out of their positions at around profitable or, or slightly unprofitable, basically break even either way. They do it again here. Open interest falls, traders take break even. Any longs who had, you know, bought here, bought here are like, woof, you know, I was in a pretty big loss. I'm glad I got out right there. Third time. OI doesn't fall. Why does OI not fall? Well, OI doesn't fall because there's probably no more trap liquidity. Any longs who had wanted to exit here had already done so. So they don't exit here. No, no one really exits here. And this is a sign that the price is probably going to pump. Well, why? Well, the reason it's going to, the reason why it pumps here is kind of sadistic, um, but, but it's just the way that price tries to keep as many people unprofitable as possible. Any shorts who had shorted here, unfortunately, never had the opportunity to get out of their positions profitable, right? You know, anyone who had shorted around here, they're, they're not getting out, right? Because they're trapped and price clearly doesn't just does not want to let them out. But any longs here who actually would have been making a profit had they waited and not exited here, they had already exited. So the longs who, who bought here are, are have lost money. Uh, the shorts who had shorted here have lost money, and probably even the longs who bought here have even probably lost money. Well, why do I say that? Well, each time the price falls, you can see down to here that open interest also does fall a bit. This is what the loss cycle is. Now, if, if some of that didn't make sense to you, it probably will once I explain this to you in the, in the next two, three minutes, and then you can actually even come back to this part of the video, and I think what I will be saying will just make a lot more sense. This is what I mean. I want you to not focus on price. I want you to not focus on long, short, or open interest. Just look at this diagram I drew. It has nothing to do with what's going on here. It's just a diagram. Imagine that a lot of longs and shorts opened here, open interest was rising, people are entering. So price rises and the shorts are all trapped. They're locked. Anyone who had shorted here is now at a loss. The longs at this price point are pretty happy. They're probably all saying, hey, you know, you, you shorts were all wrong. You know, bears are silly, stupid, and whatever. And then price begins to fall. Now you have to remember that guess what? Typically, most longs are entering the upper half of consolidation slash range, and most shorts are entering in the lower half of consolidation range. So by price actually going here, it accomplishes two objectives. First of all, it keeps any shorts who had shorted here unprofitable and locked in their positions for future liquidity to tap into. And the second thing, which is not really commonly talked about, is the loss cycle itself. When price goes down to here, there are a lot of people who had longed here, right? Who, who, who had bought here and were happy. Let's say that any individual long who had bought right there was up 200 bucks. Now when price goes back down to here, they're up five. They're pretty scared that price is gonna go into an unprofitable, make them into an unprofitable position. So a lot of those longs actually sell off onto stronger hands, stronger longs, market makers who buy at a beautiful price and then price rises. Additionally, lots of trading articles online say to place your stop loss at break even. Market makers know this. This is not something new, 
Putting your stop loss at break even is a very normal thing to do, but it can be problematic. Why? Well, all of the longs who had bought here, they're in profitable positions. Then they put their stop loss at just slight break even to make sure that they have a profit. Well, they all sell off, sell off, sell off onto traders who buy at great prices and then price goes up. Why am I explaining this? By price doing this, it hurt both the longs and it hurt the shorts. This little pattern here hurts everyone, that, uh, all the retail traders in here. The shorts are locked in, they can't get out. The longs are at minimal profit and are bummed because price just continue rising without them. This hurts as many people as possible. And this is a perfect, really, demonstration of what uh, Tom Lexke wrote in here. Read this right here. And then once you read it, I want you to focus on this last line. Price returns to the locked in range for the execution of a break even of profitable position. This is just is just so interesting because what this means is that price returns to the locked in range for the execution, meaning that all of the traders who are actually in profitable positions are exiting their positions at break even, even when price is just going to bounce right back off and put them right back into profit, you know, had they stayed. And this is a good example right here. As you can see, yep. So this is really what I want to focus on in today's video. And really going back to that example before, you know, this is the live showing of it, not the not the picture of it. But you, you can just see just how price likes to burn as many people as possible. So what I talked about here was the highs here and how, you know, open interest dropped. Uh, Open, open interest of Bitcoin dropped here too. And then open interest doesn't really drop here. I mean, it drops down here, but it just doesn't really drop here because anyone who wanted to take break even uh, profit from their longs probably already did so. And any shorts who, uh, you know, had, had shorted here had probably already exited, as you can see here. And then maybe even something really sadistic happened where a short, you know, opened here, then put their stop loss like one tick above here. Uh, they exit their short here, and then they try to short again here because they think they were wrong of getting their stop loss hits, they short here, and then they get trapped there. You know, pretty pretty sad sadistic things that, that can happen to retail traders there as well. But what I want to focus on is these lows. So price does not actually go to the bottom half of this range here because uh, there are a lot of trap shorts down here. There's a lot of volume transacted here, and look just how much open interest is rising, so much, 72K to you know, 73K in a very short period of time. Uh, lots and lots and lots of people are entering. Lots of shorts are entering down here. Lots of longs are entering up here. But when those longs are entering, probably a lot of them had actually sold off at break even here, here, or maybe they put their stop losses here. You know, I'm gonna put my stop loss right here because that will get me out at slight profit. So it hits their stop loss at slight profit and then price just goes up without them. And that's how that burns both the shorts who stay trapped because price doesn't go down to that lower half and the longs who had even bought uh, correctly and you know price rises, uh, price rises without them. So who's the counterparty to these trades? It's the market maker. Uh, I mean, not the market maker, but it's market makers, HFTs and stronger traders and also traders who, who take advantage of other retail traders and take advantage of their psychology. Take advantage of the fact that we don't wanna put price in a position where it will actually allow too many traders to get you know, jail, jailbroken or jailbreak, or whatever it's called, uh, t basically allowing all the shorts to get out of their positions at, uh, at break even. Because right now, there are probably also a fair amount of shorts who are still trapped here. And price could maybe, you know, do something to them to uh, kill them all. So that is really what the loss cycle is. I'm going to get rid of, uh, of this here. But what I also wanna show you guys is not just the open interest and price version of it, but, but, but also sentiment. So what you're looking at here that I've covered in dozens of my videos is the long short account percentage. So when, when this is dropping, that means that more Binance accounts are going short. When this is rising, that means that more Binance accounts are going long, Binance futures accounts, pardon me. And you can see the value for this. This is the long percentage. That's right here. So right here, you can see it's at 0.563 or 56.3% long. You know, down here, we're then at 54.7% long. Now, what we can see here is actually a pretty similar kind of uh, thing that thing that's going on here. You can see that the first time that price actually goes right up to here, we begin to see a drop in this. 
and a drop in open interest. A drop in the long short percentage and a drop in open interest means that longs are exiting primarily, are, are mostly exiting, and they do. We can see that the longs exit here. Then on the second time, it just everyone just seems to be wanting to short. Short, 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 and, and longs really are uh, exiting at, um, at uh, break even here. And then the third time here, just this is just all shorting again. So what ended up happening here is we collected a ton of shorts in this range, right? As we also had, uh, you know, collected a bunch of shorts in this range too, and then price goes up without them, and maybe we'll even try to keep them trapped by kind of doing what it's doing here. It's kind of trying to like not allow too many of these guys to get out of their positions um, at break even. So you know, we will see what happens with that. But this is really what you what you want to look for: open interest in conjunction with uh, the long short percentage. So to sum up, what is the loss cycle? And really, how do you take advantage of this? Well, the loss cycle is when price moves away from a locked-in range and ensures that both the short, the retail shorts, and the retail longs both lose money. How does it do this? How is it able to hurt everyone, even those who are betting correctly? Well, it, it does this because let's say that there was a locked-in, there, there actually was a locked-in range here. There's a locked-in range around here, you know, lots of shorts and longs entering, especially when open interest begins to rise here, you know, Really around here, we begin to get a lot of people entering. The shorts are probably like, oh my gosh, you know, price is just going to keep going down. Price is just going to keep going down. I'm going to put, say, my um, break even stop loss right there. And then, lo and behold, it gets hit. You know? But any longs who had entered here, probably a lot of them had entered up here. Maybe they didn't even have an opportunity to get out of their positions at break even. Or, even more sadistically, if a lot of them do have the, um, you can see that open interest fell and the long short percentage fell, which indicates that longs are exiting. If both, if the longs actually were like, oh my gosh, finally, I bought here in the upper half of consolidation. Finally, I'm able to exit my position at break even, right? And then this happens again. And then even more longs exit at break even. Then do you know what's gonna happen to price probably? Well, this is what would happen. If price goes up to here and then we get another drop in the long short and another drop in open interest indicating that any uh, trap, trap longs here were exiting, then price is probably just gonna do something like this. And then all the longs who had, um, who had been like, you know, I, I'm so glad that I got out of my position at 0.1% profit, they're gonna be very, very bummed to see that uh, you know something like this happens and they could have had far more profit. I'm not saying this will happen. This is again just a visual of what could possibly happen if price goes up to this high and we begin to see these guys try to get out of the longs at break even because if a lot of uh, retail trader longs get out of their positions at break even, they're probably not getting out of those positions at a perfect price. They're probably getting out of those positions because they're selling off to stronger longs because the price is just about to pump because demand is greater than supply. So that is what the loss cycle is. It might not be as straightforward as the first video, but really a step-by-step -step process of it is like this. You looked at any locked-in range. Guys, that can be here. That could be what I just did here. Any locked-in range where price moves beyond, like this or this, right? After you looked at that locked-in range, think of both the shorts and think of the longs. Think of how we can hurt both the shorts and the longs. You hurt the shorts here by not allowing price to go below where they had shorted. You hurt the longs by scaring them into selling their long positions to a stronger long so that they get minimal profit because they probably put a stop loss at break even or to lock in 0.1% profit or some joke like that. And that's really how price can cycle endlessly and hurt as many people as possible through the loss cycle. And Tom Lexke uh, just, I think, did a great job in LRA of uh, talking about how retail traders just get burned, whether they pick the right direction or not pick the right direction. So be aware of this and take advantage of this as much as you can. Be on the lookout for patterns and always keep an eye on open interest and price because open interest and price are going to reveal to you if these things are happening. And if, the, if traders have too many opportunities to get out of their longs at break even, price tends to pop price tends to pump. And if too many traders have opportunities to get out of their out of their shorts at break even, that's when price tends to fall because um, even people who aren't in positions need to be burned. You know, any shorts who had exited here are going to feel the pain when price, you know, goes 
like 1% down without them. So that's going to be it for this video. I know um, covering the cycle of endless loss of retail traders is not a very happy subject, but it is a subject that you can make a fair amount of money from if you know what you're doing. And you can even use the loss cycle to put your stop losses. What I mean by that is, you know, in this kind of diagram here, look, we, we know that we're going to first scare longs to sell off their positions. So you could put your, you know, your, maybe your buy order somewhere around here because you know that will spook the longs to selling off and you would have been filled at the market bottom. Two, you put your stop loss at the lower end of this range or beyond, probably better at the lower end of the range because you know that many shorts are going to stay locked in their positions here because they're going to get uh, attacked for liquidity later. And that would be perfect trading. Like that would actually be, be perfect. I know, I know guys that this is 2020 uh, hindsight, but if you had bought here and put a stop loss, let's say here, I, I mean, your, your risk is tiny. Your risk is like 0.2%. And if you had done a hundred thousand dollar, you know, position, that would be, I think by my math, like 20 bucks. Is that right? No, 200 bucks. So that'd be like 200 bucks risk if you had bought here and you would currently be up about 620 bucks. Is my math right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That for 100k, that that is right. This is really, uh, I think, the best possible way of trading is taking advantage of cycles of loss of longs and shorts, making sure that the trapped positions stay trapped, and making sure that the profitable positions from that range get spooked into giving up their positions at a terrible price. With that, happy trading, and I'm looking forward to talking to you guys some more. Bye bye.